Welcome to the Venture Clash Entrepreneurship Podcast, where we meet entrepreneurs in the digital health and fintech spaces. Together, we'll hear real-world stories, gain practical insights, and discover the amazing things happening behind the scenes of thriving early-stage companies making their mark. It's time for the Venture Clash Entrepreneurship Podcast. Well, hey there, everybody. My name is Kenny Jang, host of the Venture Clash Entrepreneurship Podcast. Today, I've got a fantastic guest. Sri Mutu is the head of technology for wholesale innovation, R&D, and the Wells Fargo Startup Accelerator. Um, he is a fantastic conversation partner in terms of what is going on in the digital health startup space. Previously, Sri was a co-founder of Clear Exchange. You might have heard of them, the pay payments joint venture between Bank of America, uh, Capital One, JP Morgan Chase, Wells Fargo. That outfit is something that he was a part of. He also co-founded Wells Fargo's incubator and their labs and R&D for their internet services group. Um, he's also managed their online investment technology group and was responsible for their online brokerage and t trust sites, as well as their OFX and uh, investment websites, uh, web services. And Sri most recently has been putting on his Yale Bulldogs uniform uh, oh, with yeah. um, their MBA program in healthcare. And um, he's also had previous stints at Stanford and Virginia Tech. Uh, this guy has been going around the country and collecting diplomas and degrees, as I kid him. Um, but today, I invited him to, today to talk with us about Health Venture, which is a digital health incubator and foundry that's based in New Haven, Connecticut, um, that builds MVPs for four months at a time and then to launch um, and really helps these um, health practitioners get to market. So welcome to the show today. Thank you, Kenny. That was very kind of you. Long intro. <laughs> I added actually one very recently. I went to Oxford and added a, a week for private equity. Nice, so, nice. Always a lifelong learner. This is what I love to meet people like you. Um, and then people like you that are willing to share your experiences with sure. uh, our audience here. So here at Venture Class, we are focusing in on fintech, insurtech, and digital health. You're obviously in one of those specific spaces today with um, your startup and foundry. Can you tell us a little bit about um, what the connection is? How did you get to Health Venture? How sure. old is your actual project right now? And where is it at? Sure. So great. Uh, you know, I came from banking in a fintech, right? So as, as you know, highly regulated industry, very consumer oriented business, um, very much a very competitive landscape. And coming to Yale to do a healthcare MBA is one of those things that after 16 years in healthcare financial services, looking at healthcare and realizing that those same principles apply. It's a highly regulated industry. Privacy and security are really critical. It's a very consumer centric uh, business and it needed some shaking up. That's that's sort of my humble opinion. And uh, so that was what we did. So when we came here, a bunch of us looked at all the different opportunities, a group of classmates and I. And last year in the fall, we put together a new company called Health Venture. It's, a, as you mentioned, it's a digital health focused startup. Uh, we're going to be headquartered in New Haven in Connecticut because we think Connecticut is actually a really good place between Boston and New York to get all the sort of juices from the technology folks yeah. and the finance yeah. folks and everybody in one place. And as you know, New Haven has a, a breadth of talent, right? We have a lot of fun people. So we started um, in the fall, we sort of workshopped the process through the school, through the school of management, through YEI, working with Connecticut Innovations. And then this summer, we're actually launching our prototype round. So we have three companies that we're taking through our prototype round. And we're actually prototyping our own company ourselves by taking them through the round itself, and we are targeting a formal launch in the fall. So wait for the announcements, big launch coming up in August. That's cool. And so um, Connecticut itself uh, seems to be attracting a lot of digital health um, organizations, companies, startups, etc. cetera. Um, have you been able to plug into that greater network in, in, in the region? Yeah, and actually that's exactly the reason why I chose Connecticut, right? So the key value of trying to do any innovation, as you know, is, is about the network. It's about the people that you get to work with, about the partners you get to work. And Connecticut just has, um, and New Haven especially has, you know, Yale New Haven hospitals out there. Jackson Labs is nearby. Uh, there are a lot of biotech firms, there's a lot of universities, there's a lot of schools of man. It is just a network. There's also venture capital that's floating around around here. There's some hedge funds that are interested in some private equity businesses. So we think there's all the, the partners for the ecosystem is present, right? And now what we want to try to do is bring them all together and build and launch products, right? We are, we're in the mid, in the Eastern corridor. We have access to a huge market, 
right? And part of our project doing with Yale is global network is we're actually going to be opening uh, satellite offices in other parts of the world as well, leveraging what's in Connecticut. So trying to sell products in Connecticut and the Eastern Seaboard, but also in China, also in India, also in Jakarta. Uh, these are all part of the global network that Yale's part of, and we're going to leverage that same network. So I think that's one of the key advantages why New Haven is sort of our starting spot. Nice, nice. So tell, us, tell me a little bit about the team that you have started to assemble, and then maybe we can talk about also one of the projects or the, um, the actual ideas that you're taking to market. Sure. So um, the team right now consists of uh, several folks from um, in a, from uh, pharmacy companies, uh, somebody from Omnicare. Uh, we have folks from uh, venture capital uh, firms out of China. We have a couple of folks who are actually undergrads uh, working um, in biomedical engineering. So on the, on the more tech side of the folks, we've got a product manager uh, who's worked uh, primarily in, 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 in banking. That's just the same, that's the New Haven team. We also have probably at this point about 15 advisors uh, that are either with um, affiliated through the school or affiliated through Connecticut who are uh, actively spending an hour, two hours a week helping these organizations kind of get them through. Uh, and at this point, they're doing it pro bono, which is very nice of them. Um, and um, we then have a team of technologists who are actually spread over the US. Uh, we have one in New Haven. We've got one in Florida, one in a uh, couple in San Francisco from my old teams, and we're pulling them all together to help build and launch this product. So this summer, because we're doing a prototype run, we're actually just really focusing on building and launching some companies. There's a product called Sepsis DX. It is a product that helps dis discover what levels of uh, sepsis a patients have in a hospital. And we're working with them to help them build a mobile app so they can actually use it in the hospital uh, and see uh, what likelihood you are going to be to have need to take antibiotics or not need to take antibiotics. This is an example of another, one of the ones. We have another team that we're uh, helping out right now that is doing a health uh, insurance product with athletes um, that we're still in the discussion phase with. So we have a range of products that are coming in. For the summer, we're focusing on helping these folks get ready to the pitch stage, you know, getting their product thinking through, getting their business plans done, getting their prototyping done, finding out what problem are they really trying to solve, right? And how can we leverage what's in Connecticut to make that happen? Yeah, I think um, in my experience in the startup world, right, getting to version one is better than version none. And that minimum viable product is so critical, especially in those initial rounds of funding, right? Yeah, and, and we think the valuation is actually much better, right? So I come from the West Coast in Silicon Valley. You know, launching something in 90 to 120 days for MVP or prototype is very normal, right? So we're trying to apply that same concept to you know, academic university-based startups, healthcare-based startups, and say, let's get it out to a real customer. Let's get the hospital, let's get the patient, let's get the clinician to actually use the product in 90 days and give us feedback, and then we'll iterate through that, rather than you know just thinking about the product. As you point out, it's, it's, it's much better to get feedback uh, from actual users and actual consumers and actual customers, ideally paying customers, than trying to just you know iterate by yourself. Now, and that's what the team is really focused is on. Is your group and your startup, uh, your startup yourself, uh, Health Venture, is that independent for profit, or is that associated with uh, just like you know at Wells Fargo you ran their incubator, Yale has an entrepreneurship center, etc. Um, is this an independent venture for profit, or is this associated with some other larger institution? This is actually an independent uh, benefit corporation. We are going to we are we are a B corporation. A B, one of the B Corps, we are hoping to get certified next year, because it takes a year. And we are going to be affiliated in the sense that we're going to be partnering with Yale New Haven Hospital, Yale University, YEI, Connecticut Innovations, uh, and, and a few other organizations that we're still in discussions with, to basically act as partner, innovation partners for them, or a place for them to test and learn their new products. So those are the folks that we're, and primarily because there is such an ecosystem here, right? right. And it's a shame not to take advantage of that ecosystem. Gotcha. And then what is the, the compensation structure? Do you take an equity stake in those ventures that you're helping out? Correct. So we do take an equity stake, and it's a the percentage ranges from depending on what level of effort we're putting in, or how long it takes, and how early stage they come. What, what we think is we are basically acting as your virtual co-founder, right? We're coming in as your virtual co-founder with with the focus of really, really supporting the startup because so then our alignment is with you, right? We only make money if you make money. Right. The product sells. The customers are actually loving the thing, and healthcare. Um, 
actually improves, right? We had a better health outcome than we went. So it's a it's a long term play, right? It's it's almost a, a there's an associated venture fund, right? So it's a long term play to say we'll help invest in these companies, we'll help build the products. You can either bring in uh, financing yourself, or we'll help you raise financing. What we think we've seen, and I've seen this in my previous uh, gigs, is that if you can show a working prototype your valuation is X. Yes. You can show a prototype or an MVP that has actually a customer using it and is willing <laughs> to pay for it. Now your valuation is a very big multiple of that X you started out yes. with. Yes. Right? So, you know, as one of our professors used to say, you know, a, 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 a small slice of a very big pie is much better than a, a big slice of no pie. Yes, yes. Yeah, it's uh, one of those things where um, you have to ask when, yeah, we've sold the product. Other than your mom or your cousin, <laughs> has someone given you real money, not monopoly money, right? Correct. And uh, that is, you, you've nailed it. This is actually our focus. Our focus is on execution. MVP launch. When you talk to my team, they'll say the same thing. What's our MVP? When are we launching? Who's the customer? Gotcha. Right. Those are the three key questions we keep focusing on over and over again. And we, we chose 120 day because that's what we've done in the past. And my team has done this in the past in fintech. We're going to do the same thing in healthcare. Gotcha. So we'll see uh, where that goes. So what's the capacity? How many startup actual venture projects do you have the capacity at this point and this next So year? we are going to be a very limited intentionally so. So each location, because we want to focus, we want to actually pay attention to the teams that need yeah. to build the product. We're not going to take more than three or four, four max per round. And we only do three rounds a year. So we do a spring round, a summer round, and a fall round. Four months, four months apiece. We'll take a max of four, probably more likely three, frankly. Um, and we're in the prototype phase right now, which is typically a four-week process to help get a business plan together and a rapid, actual clickable prototype working uh, so that we can take, take it in front of venture capitalists and angel investors and institutions to actually fund the next few rounds or even us funding the next round. And then you go into a sort of a, a four-month pitch pro build and launch product. Right, right, so we right. get that going. And the nice thing about this approach is, you know, there's a lot of clinicians who really want to solve healthcare problems, but they're surgeons, they're physicians, they're psychiatrists. This is not a skill set that they have, right? You know, it, and they can go to their existing IT shops within their hospitals, but, you know, they're busy trying to do EMR. You know, they're busy trying to get HIPAA compliant. They've got their own projects going on. Trying to find time for innovation is a bit of a challenge, yes. right? Larger organizations have the ability to set aside some funds and time to help get innovation going. We think that's one of the things we bring to the to the to the area. We have a focused execution oriented innovation hub that allows hospitals and labs and 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 individual physicians and students. We are focusing a lot on students right now, um, and and anybody an entrepreneur who says, "Hey, I've got a I'm busy. I got a job. I'm trying, but I have this great healthcare idea. And I really want to make a difference." but I need to figure out how to build this. Well, that's where we come in and we help them do it. And the Connecticut ecosystem, as you know, with you know, with uh, Venture Clash, you know, there is an ecosystem out here. It's just waiting to be launched, and but they are, they are out there. And I think, you know, Matt and, and, and those folks are doing a really nice job of pulling folks together across the state to say, hey, we've got the tools, we've got the funding, we've got the smart people. And that's where we come in and say, and if you're interested in digital health, we'll help you. That's nice. Right. I really like that approach. Um, that accelerator component um, is something that's sorely needed in almost any vertical niche community. Now, when you're looking at digital health in particular, what is, what's like one of the top trends that you're seeing in terms of um, application of technology or new startup services? So I, I think the, you know, the obvious one is everything is really going to mobile, but actually mobile is probably not the right word. The, the, what's actually going to is the technology is going to where the person is. So instead of having to go to the hospital or to get some uh, results, you might now look at it in your phone. Yep. Instead of having to go to CVS to get your pulse and your blood pressure check, now we're going to have a Fitbit type device or a phone type device or an internal device. So we, I think we're going to see this personalization aspect of healthcare really driving sort of some of the new trends, right? Where it's about you, Kenny, and what are your health needs and what are your wellness needs and what do you want to do? How many, as you said, how many steps does your wife walk every day, right? Uh, is she getting um, uh, enough exercise during the day? Is she doing uh, all the things that she wants to do with her community? So I think this personalization of her and her community is going to be a trend that's going to keep taking up. Yeah. And you see it in personal medicine too, right? 
you know, people are starting to do sort of gene-based medicine. This is just a trend where, Kenny, you are not just Kenny, a, a, a number, but Kenny, a person that we know some something about. We have some actual data about you. Yeah. Right? And so about the actual entrepreneurs that you're meeting, are they just medical professionals in practice right now? Or, or are you thinking that in this next phase or this next stage of digital health in, in broadly, that we're going to see more startup ventures coming out of school or younger. For instance, my high school daughter, um, I think in the next two years in high school, is going to be sequencing a DNA genome, a little piece of DNA. Like the, the access to technology has become so democratized that the creative ideas and, and execution can happen earlier. Is that something that you're seeing already or is that still down the pike? We see a lot of young people coming up with great ideas. In fact, some of the companies we're having right now, uh, three of them, don't actually have a clinician associated with them yet. They're still trying to look for somebody, but they are college students or they're recent grads or some of them are in different industry altogether. Uh, we have somebody who's doing a, a data mining exercise. Um, they come from a physical therapy background. Nice. They are not nice. a, a, a sort of a physician. So I think you are seeing this democratization. You see young people. We have a 19 year old as one of our summer interns right now, and she wants to work with a team that's uh, building uh, a, a device for people uh, CF, right? So absolutely clear that because technology is getting faster and cheaper and easy to use, coding is getting to the point where anybody can sort of prototype easily with some help, uh, you're going to see you're going to see a, a broader base of folks nice. coming in, which nice. is probably you know, need that we need the diversity of thought, we need the diversity of ideas, yes. uh, we need the diversity of actually the people coming in uh, to do the work. Nice. So uh, what about the issue of privacy? Where do you stand on that? Are we, if healthcare is one of the places where privacy is still mission critical for the consumer. Um, and yet we have this tension where culture, society, social media is going the absolute opposite direction. And where, where are we going with that? Well, so this is an interesting challenge, right? So folks like you and me who have a different generation tend to be very focused on privacy just from day one. Where else, when I took, talk to my, some of my summer interns who are much younger, they think about privacy in the context of, well, ac across my friends, I don't need to be private, but across my elders or people yeah. that I don't want to be, I need to be private. And we sort of have a slightly different approach, right? And coming from a banking background, you know, I, and I'm also a certified uh, information security professional in healthcare, and I work with HIPAA all the time. Uh, that's an area of big focus for us. In fact, we think actually that's one of the value props we'll have because we're going to be focused on privacy as a core value in the product. Hmm. But to your point that, of, well, do I then share my status update on the fact that I walked 10,000 steps on Facebook? Well, that, that might seem like a good thing. It's sort of a humble brag, right? Hey, look at me, I got my 10,000 steps in, which I think is a good thing, right? Because you want to get feedback, you want to get positive feedback. But maybe do you want to tell people that um, you're diabetic or that you have, uh, that you're going for cataract surgery tomorrow right. or that you may have some, we don't know that yet, and we're actually seeing the tension showing up in the industry, right? There's a community of folks who are basically saying, the Society for Participative Medicine, there's a community of folks saying, by actually sharing this information, we're reducing the stigma, right? It's okay to have certain chronic conditions. Yep. It's okay. It's not your choice. It's a healthcare issue, right? And and therefore, it's, it's a different way of thinking about the yep. world, you know? And I come from... The, frankly, where I would probably never tell anyone that, you know, I'm starting to lose a little bit of hair on the top of my head because I'm so tall, you can't see me, right? But the younger people may be like, eh, it's okay. And, and I think that's that's the tension you're going to see between the different communities. And obviously, there's a difference in, in sort of the regulated things, right? You know, there are things that you and I may be private about as patients and are willing to share, very different from the very, very strict rules that what an application or a clinician or a hospital can share. HIPAA has very strong and, in my opinion, very good guidelines on, on those things. Privacy should be a choice that you have to make different choices, right? Right, right. And, 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 and I, I really think it's a generational thing. I absolutely think it's a generational thing. Nice. That's a the very good insight and a perspective on that. Um, getting back to health venture in particular, as we close out this interview, um, where are where do you see your team and this entire start of venture for yourself um, in the next three years, five years? Is it something where it's a franchise model in all the major cities 
You've got teams. It is, is it going to be a completely virtual distributed network? Is it something that you're going to eventually consolidate and hunker down and have a headquarters somewhere where it's a real labs where people plug in like a more traditional incubator? Where, where is it going to go? I think we want to leverage Connecticut and get it well established year one. But we're already office in Beijing. We're going to have an office in Mumbai. These are all fitted with those locations. We're going to have another office in Berkeley uh, because it's Silicon Valley. Uh, and we're going to use those locations, those five to five to eight locations, to start scaling the products that are built in Connecticut to be sold in China. And to have products that are built in Mumbai being sold in the U.S. for health, because healthcare is healthcare globally. So we're asking that question from a global perspective. We think we can get this out to a larger community. Okay, Sri, are you ready for our lightning round of questions? You bet you, Kenny. Let's go. Okay, so last couple of uh, years you've been going by coastal, west coast, east coast. You're doing a lot of travel. What is your best travel tip? So the easiest way to make friends at airports is to actually have a charger that has multiple outlets and tips on it so you can help share the power supply that's right by the wall or there you can have three or four people come share with you you'd be surprised how many great people you get to meet doing that that so. is fantastic tip it reminds me when i was in a columbia business school studying life i used to carry around a actual power strip oh there you go hey, <laughs> that's where the party was wherever that was i <laughs> uh, love that travel trip though it's great to meet people like that okay second one is What's one of the best resources or practices or approaches that you've had to ensure that your mind is fresh and fully embracing innovation and creativity in what you do? Um, this is something I actually do with my team. We actually just go for long walks. It sounds goofy, but instead of having meetings, we actually just spend 20, 30 minutes going on a walk. We find a park, find a city, even an urban location. Uh, just being out of the space, yeah. just going for a walk with no agenda of just saying, hey, we're just going to interact. We'll look around what we some." You come back just refreshed. Right. And you've had a good conversation with your with your team and whether it's one or two people and you got a little bit of exercise. So blood's moving. Your brain's juiced up. Your connections are going good. You're happy. You'd be surprised how much, much, much more effective you are with ideas. After that. I love that. I love that. Yeah. Mindfulness and the physical environment is such a big key to productivity. Um, love that. And the last one is um, if someone watching today wanted to get in touch with you, what's the best way someone could connect directly with you today? Is it email, Twitter, Snapchat? What, what is it? Well, I'm a, still an old school email person. Email works great, but I'm also on Twitter. So feel free to reach me on either one. WhatsApp seems to be really popular with my younger colleagues. So that's great, too. What so, are, what's your account handles on those platforms? So on uh, Twitter, it's Tall Duck, T-A-L-L-D-U-C. Um, that's my uh, Twitter handle. On email, it's uh, sri.muthu at healthventure.com. Nice. So nice. just come on. There. And I'm going to give out my cell phone, even though this is very dangerous. It's, uh, <laughs> it's 415-786-4933. That's 415-786-4933. Send me a WhatsApp message. I'll connect to you. Nice. This, this is a man who is, you know, saying and keeping his word. He wants to engage with you guys. Um, Thank you so much for being with us today. And uh, thank you everybody here for listening to today's interview. I want you guys to check out the entire series of interviews from our podcast on iTunes and Stitcher Radio or go to our site, VentureClash.com for all the video, audio versions, transcripts, show notes, and more. It's also the place you'll learn about our $5 million Venture Clash startup competition that's going on right now. So if you're an entrepreneur working in the fintech, insurtech, digital health space, one of those three areas, you'll definitely want to check out all the details of the program. And that's a wrap for today's episode. Sri, thanks so much for visiting with us today. Thank you so much, Kenny. This has been so much fun. Yes, really definitely. I'm Kenny Jang, host of today's podcast. Thank you for joining us. If you know of an entrepreneur we should be intervening next, please connect with us on Twitter or VentureClash.com. Till next time, take care and keep innovating. Thanks for tuning into today's episode of the Venture Clash Entrepreneurship Podcast. Drop by www.VentureClash.com as to learn about the $5 million Venture Clash Startup Challenge. We've set aside millions to support your innovation and product offerings. Venture Clash is also the place where you'll find the resources you need to help grow your business. Check out the contest at www.VentureClash.com today.